Welcome to another episode of the Jam Pack Report, the day for March the 8th of 2021. Of course, my name is Samuel Adams, and this is a daily gaming news podcast meant to bring you the hottest news you need to know from around the industry. Hosted on YouTube and podcast services around the world five days a week, it's your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. So if you enjoy the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. But a big story to kick off the week because that March 5th deadline was hit and the ZeniMax acquisition by Microsoft is set to go through thanks to its approval from the European Commission, which was one of the biggest hurdles standing between Microsoft and building out its Xbox Game Studios family even further. Now, we've been talking about this story for a number of months now, ever since the news was announced last fall uh, that this was actually going to go down. But it marks one of the biggest acquisitions in gaming history. $7.5 billion is spent on getting studios like Bethesda and Machine Games and Arcane Studios into the Microsoft family. And again, it looks like that is set to go through imminently. Now, we've been talking a lot over the course of the past few weeks about a potential Xbox event showcasing what this this acquisition means for the future of storied franchises like Fallout and Elder Scrolls, and I wouldn't be surprised to see something like that happen, but nothing has been announced as of today, Monday, March 8th, at roughly 6 a.m. So, take everything else that you hear with a grain of salt. But it would be very wise to go ahead and get ahead of the rumors and to address what will be happening with these games. I made a video a couple of weeks back talking about my take on the situation, but I am not a leader at Microsoft. We need some clarification as to what is going to be happening going forward. Will a lot of these games be Xbox exclusives? Will some of them remain on PlayStation? Will they all remain multi-platform? There has not been a definitive answer given yet, and that's something that needs to be done. But here it is in the European Commission filings officially a merger case has been found, and this is essentially the final step. It has been approved. It's good to go. There are no caveats, no exceptions, no special terms. It's it's just straight set good to go. Of course, for those that don't know why this is happening, uh, essentially the European Commission goes through everything to make sure that there are no kind of antitrust issues, uh, no monopolies are created from a large merger or acquisition, and they did not find one in this case. So, it looks like the next few weeks will certainly be interesting for Xbox fans, and for those that are wondering what the future looks like for Fallout, Elder Scrolls, Doom, Wolfenstein, so many more games uh, that are kind of hanging in the balance right now as to what will happen to them. But if things stay multi-platform, you could be playing these games on Google Stadia, assuming that also sticks around, but you could be playing it on Google Stadia on your Xbox console because Microsoft has started testing Edge Chromium on Xbox. And for those that don't know what Edge Chromium is, it is the latest build of Microsoft Edge, the web browser from Microsoft. It's very good. Now, Google Chrome has pretty much been the gold standard for web browsing experiences for the better part of the past decade or so. But looking forward to the future, Microsoft has rebuilt its Edge browser. It is now built into and considered the foundational web browsing experience for every Windows 10 device. And I've been using it as my main daily driver for roughly about six months now. I was in the beta program for Edge Chromium when it rolled out, and now I continue using it day after day. I consider it to be better than Google Chrome. I love the browser. It has complete and total uh, compatibility with the Google Chrome Web Store, which means you have plenty of themes and extensions that you can't apply. And then Microsoft is continuing to build out its own extension offerings as well. It's a very good experience, and I highly recommend diving in and checking it out on your PC if you're the kind of nerd like me that likes to check out new web browsers. But what does it mean for Edge on Xbox? In short, you can now have extensions on Xbox. Sync is brought in so that you can synchronize your bookmarks, your history, everything that you need on your Xbox console. And it also allows web apps to run easier like Discord on your Xbox console. But on top of that, it also runs Google Stadia, which is something that I think the gaming media picked up and ran with over the weekend. Uh, but will anyone actually use that functionality? Probably not. But it's still interesting to see that Edge Chromium is coming to the Xbox consoles. And this is good for a couple of different reasons. First and foremost, there are several times that I have gone into my achievements on Xbox and you can choose to search for help. I needed a solution to find whatever I was doing in whatever game I was playing. And it opens 
opens up a web browser that takes you to essentially a Google search results feed of how to solve this achievement and how to earn this achievement. And the experience was kind of lackluster. I'm not saying it's going to be much better because Edge Chromium is involved, but it's probably going to run a bit faster. There's uh, easier loading on web pages. It just makes a more robust modern experience. So nothing to complain about here. But if you did want to dive in, Edge Chromium is now out on Xbox, uh, and I will, or I should say it's coming soon on Xbox according to the uh, subtitle there, but I will say you should download it on your phones, on your PCs, on your Macs, whatever you're using. Edge is just phenomenal. Big fan of it. But to round out today's show, Watch Dogs Legion's online mode has been delayed on PC, but on PlayStation, Xbox, and Google Stadia, you are not without issues as well. Watch Dogs Legion put this on Twitter saying, quote, Dead sec, we are excited to see new recruits in London when we launch the online mode of Watch Dogs Legion on March 9th. Before we launch, we want to make you aware of a few things that have just come to our attention. We have identified an issue in the PC version that can cause the game to crash for players with certain GPUs. The team is working on fixing the issue as quickly as possible, and in the meantime, we have made the decision to wait to launch the PC version until this is fixed. We will communicate the new launch date as soon as possible. We have also identified an issue that can cause the game to crash during the tactical op. Therefore, we have made the decision to launch it on Xbox, PlayStation, and Stadia on March 23rd. PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 will have limited in-game text chat at launch, and we are working on a fix for this, which will be coming on March 23rd as well. We are committed to delivering the best experience to all players and are working diligently to address the issues outlined above. We appreciate your patience and understanding from the Watch Dogs Legion dev team. Super unfortunate that they continue to run into issues with this game, but this is one that has seen troubles since the very beginning. Not saying it's a bad game, not saying it can't recover, but the development and the launch and the subsequent support of this game has been very, very rough. And working from home, of course, has been a part of that hardship as well. Uh, but hopefully they iron out all the issues. The PC version seems to be the one that is getting hit the hardest here because they had to delay the entire thing. But on top of that, you also have complete and total game crashes on PC depending on a GPU. And that is very, very unfortunate. So hopefully we could see this sometime maybe end of March, beginning of April. That sounds nice. Uh, but again, they have not put any kind of definitive date on that. So don't hold your breath, they will update you when the time comes because I would much rather have a game that is ready and complete than one that is rushed and you run into issues in the long run. But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about everything we talked about here today. But specifically, what do you think will happen with the Microsoft acquisition of ZeniMax Media? Do you think these games are going to go multi-platform? Do you think they will stay in the Xbox family of consoles as console exclusives? Let me know in the comment section down below. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon and peace.